everybody. Um, my name is Kristen Keller and I work for Michaels. I am really excited today. We are going to work on this adorable little forest scene. This kind of art is called mixed media. So we're going to paint and then we're going to draw glue some stuff and then we're going to like it's going to be it sticks up and it's not just like flat paint on paper. So mixed media is when you use a bunch of different kinds of art styles. So we've got some collage and some sculpture and some paints that we're going to do. So this is one of my favorite ways to paint, my favorite kinds of things to do. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, I'm going to move these guys over here. If you want to, Lindsay, go ahead and switch me over to the um, uh, main thing. I'm going to show you guys some of the tools we're going to use. OK, we're going to use some um, construction paper and we're going to use some uh, paint pad paper. This is heavyweight paper. We're also going to use our um, Createology binder, which has a, a box which has all sorts of just really great things. We're going to use a couple of different things while I'm in here, though. I'm going to grab out my paint brushes because that's where we're going to start. OK, shut that back up and then we're going to use some paint and we're going to be back in here in a minute. So let me go ahead and um, put my brushes down right here. I've got my my I've got a little cup of water right here um, off to the side. Let me pull out a piece of paper because we're going to paint on it. I'm also because I don't have a palette with me today. Um, I'm also going to use one of these to put my paint on. I'll show you what I mean by that here in just a second. I'm going to move this just a little bit so I don't keep hitting it. So you guys don't have to keep going through that. OK. OK, so let's start with our paint. OK, so I'm going to fold this in half. So what I've done is I've made turned this into like my paint palette. So I've got my my paint. Now you guys will notice my paint comes in, look, it comes in just six colors, but we're doing a forest scene. And what color do you think we need for forest that we don't have? I think it's green. We don't have any green. Um, so um, we're going to make our own green and I'm going to show you how we're going to do that. So I'm going to pull out our blue and our yellow is going to be how we're going to make green. And then also we're going to use white to give our blue, blue sky some clouds. So we're going to use those three colors. So I'm going to put this back up here. So let's start with our blue. I'm going to pull out a little bit here. And we, I have been using this paint a lot to make a bunch of different things, but I have just enough. I'm going to put the blue back up and I'm going to pull out some yellow. Okay. Now you could paint straight from in here, like just grab paint, but because we're going to be mixing some paint, I like to put it on something like this so that I can um, uh, mix it on, on my, on my, on my panel um, and not have to worry about getting my, my paint pots like contaminated with a whole bunch of different colors. Okay, so I've got white, blue, and green. We're probably honestly going to need blue a little bit more because we use a lot of blue on this one because we're going to start by using blue and green, a blue and yellow to make green, which if you guys didn't know how to mix your colors, this, this, this box has like a really helpful little like key. But this is one of my favorite things. I went to art school and I love mixing two colors to make a new third color. So blue and yellow makes green. You can use red and yellow and that makes orange. Um, and purple and red, or excuse me, red and blue make purple. I love that with like three basic colors, you can make like a whole rainbow. It's kind of cool. They call them primary colors because they are the basis to get started. So. I'm going to pull out my Createology brush. It looks like this. It's the orange one. If you have the paint, the brushes along, it doesn't, you don't have to, you can use any brush. 
I like this one because it has the flat brush like this. This is what we call a flat brush. And that's my favorite kind of brush to paint with. But there's no right or wrong brush. Like you can use any, any brush will work. So I'm going to move my paint over like that. And I am going to start. I'm going to take a little bit of blue and I'm going to move it over here. And I'm going to take a little bit of yellow. And you can see what I'm doing. I am mixing that together. And do you see how that blue and that yellow turns into green? And I want a little bit more yellow because I want it to be kind of a lighter green. I don't want it to be like a super dark green. OK, and you see, suddenly I have green. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick my horizon line. Do you guys know what the horizon line is? Um, the horizon line is where the sky meets the ground. Um, and so we're going to, the top part of the painting is going to be the, the sky. The bottom part is going to be our ground. And typically, you divide your, your paper into thirds. So I have third and third. And typically, the ground is like the bottom third. So I'm going to just kind of start. And you'll notice on my brush, I have still like yellow and blue kind of mixed in there. I like it because it gives it some texture, OK? So we're going to just kind of start painting on my paper. And we're going to kind of start. And you can kind of see all the way across, I'm going to make my line. This is going to be my horizon line. And you'll notice I don't have like a perfectly straight line. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is one of my very favorite things about art is that like it allows for like creativity. It allows for mistakes. If I decided, oh shoot, I messed it up. I don't want it to go down like that. I could like fix it and go up higher. Like there's no like, you just kind of keep working with it and you just kind of keep going. And we're just gonna kind of fill in our entire paper. And I'll, you'll notice I'm kind of doing like dabs because I don't want it to just be straight. I want it to go like grass because grass doesn't grow like this like this, it grows like this, right? So I kind of want it to look like it's like grass and standing up. And so, and then I'm gonna kind of get some more of my colors and we're gonna just kind of keep going. And so it looks like I need to mix some more green. So I'm gonna grab some more blue and just kind of keep going. We have a question. Chris. Sure, absolutely. Someone asked if they can use a different color paper to paint on. Absolutely. You can use any color paper you want. Like if you already have blue paper, and you don't want to paint the sky, then you can just paint your green on it. If you want to do like a, a cream color, you could make it like a sunset kind of color, like whatever, whatever color paper kind of paper you want to do will work. And you'll just kind of like keep adding paint. You'll see, I'll just kind of keep going. And if I decide, oh, I think I wish I had a little like spot of yellow. I might just like come over in here and mix that in because I want it to look kind of like grass is in all one color, right? So I might just kind of like dab it and just kind of like just fill it in. Okay. As long as your paint is wet, you can keep adding stuff to it. And if you decide, oh, if that was too much, I can just kind of brush over it and it will give me more, like it will blend it in a little bit. Okay. So I think that is going to be my bottom. I'm going to call that good with my, with my grass. Okay. So now I'm going to wash my brush out. I'm going to pull over my water cup and I'm going to dip my brush in my water. And I'm going to get my um, brush so that all of that green is out. And then I'm going to pull out some paper towels over here. I actually don't have paper towels handy, so I'm going to use a bunch of Kleenex from my desk. Anything you have that will, will work. And we're just going to kind of like dab it. And you might want to get it a little bit wet again. And then you can kind of like keep dabbing it. And you can get it to where? Now you see it's mostly dry and there's no more green left. So now we're going to move over to, and it's okay if your water, your, your water is always going to turn whatever the color of your paint was. And it's okay. Water is water. We'll use it again here in a minute with the blue. 
So now I have all of this big, beautiful blue sky, and I'm going to just pretty much do straight blue on here, okay? So I'm going to just get paint on my brush, and we're going to just start filling it in. Now, remember, the sky kind of goes like this, so I'm going to go a different direction on the sky because I want it to be a little bit more sky-like, right? And then here in a second, once I get this all filled in, I'll show you we're going to add some clouds. Because we live in, well, I live in Texas. You guys probably live all over the country. But I have big, famous clouds in Texas. Texas is like famous for its big, giant, big, beautiful clouds. So we're going to get it all filled in. And at this point, you don't want a ton of paint on your brush. You want it to be pretty thin because the longer, the more paint you have on your brush, the longer it's going to take to dry, if that makes any sense. So you don't want, we have a lot to do in this hour and we don't want to spend like our whole hour waiting for paint to dry because this piece is only part of it. And another thing you might do is as you work on the sky, you might start coming in and doing your brush in circles so that it kind of looks more like sky-like, right? Sky is like a little bit kind of a different texture. There's little wispy bits sometimes. And so that's sometimes you can use your brush to build texture into your painting. So I'm gonna actually turn my painting this way so that I can get to this part a little bit easier. Okay, and we're gonna fill this in and fill it in and kind of put our like little wisps on it. Get all of this filled in. The nice thing about this kind of paint is it's like washable. It's acrylic paint. So if you get it on your hands, it's okay. Now, if you get it on like your table, you it'll wash out, but you wanna make sure you kind of are careful a little bit with fabric because it might get stuck on your fabric. But it should, it should if you get it taken care of pretty quick. But okay, so. Now, do you see how we have that sky mostly done? So let me turn our paper again, back around, up and down. Okay, so now I have the sky. And what I'm going to do is I like clouds. Clouds are like my favorite. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to just grab a little bit of white. I'm not going to put a ton, just straight white. And I'm going to kind of come over and I'm just going to start painting it in. And I'm just going to kind of like do little loops, right? And then the more you blend it in, the more it's going to kind of like blend into your, your paper. And you see how it kind of blends into the blue and it looks like extra super cloud-like. So then I'm going to just do that in a couple of spots. And I'm going to come over here and it starts with a whole lot, but that doesn't look right. So I'm going to just kind of keep working and blending it into that white, that blue paint and just kind of keep working. And the more I work on it, the more it's going to like blend in. And remember clouds aren't perfect, like little fluffy, like they're gonna look all a little bit different. So there's one cloud and then I'm gonna do another cloud, okay? And I'm gonna do one kind of up here going off of the page. Now these don't have to be perfect because remember we're gonna put trees all over it and I might make it this one a little bit. We're gonna blend in a little bit of blue, make it a little bit of wispy, but you can kind of just keep blending. This is like one of my favorite things to do with paint is to just put like paint on the paper. Do you see? Just kind of keep working it. And then we're gonna do another little bit of something over here. This is gonna be kind of like a low one because sometimes there's low clouds. See what I'm working on over here? Okay, so now I've got paint on my paper. The other great thing about acrylic paint, but even if we just stopped right there, like you could be done, like you could draw like a, you could get some black or brown and put like a barn, like you could do all sorts of things and just be done right there. But that still looks pretty darn cool, I think. But we're going to give it just a minute to dry. But while it's drying, we're going to work on ripping the paper for our trees. Okay, we're going to go on to our next step. Um, and I'm going to also give you a tip about brushes. So I don't need to paint anymore. I'm done with my paint. Um, and instead of getting up right now and going and washing this brush, I'm gonna kind of get as much of the paint out as I can. And then I'm just gonna let it sit in the water. Cause as long as the brush is in the water, the paint won't dry and your brush will last forever that way. So I'm gonna put that over there and get it out of the way. 
Lindsay, do we have any questions or anything that we can talk about while I like set up for our next our next phase here? Um, not too many questions okay. so far, but just um, if you're a little bit behind, you're still painting. That's okay. That's totally okay. Um, we're gonna we only have like an hour together, so I'm gonna kind of while you're you guys can take as much time as you want, um, but I'll keep going, and then you can go back and you can get like the instructions. The other thing is, is that we've recorded a video of this and you can also go online and watch it later. Like you'll be able to rewatch it and you'll be able to show us later what it looks like. So now we're gonna go um, and we're gonna pull out some brown. Where is my brown here? Oh, yep, I have a piece that we already kind of started using. So I'm gonna, gonna pull out some brown construction paper and this is gonna be like the easiest piece. You guys ready for this? You don't even need scissors, we're gonna rip. We're gonna just tear, okay? And I'm gonna make some trunks. So now we're moving on to this part of our tree. Uh, we're actually gonna talk about building our trunks. So you can think about it. One of the rules of design is that you typically do odd numbers. You don't do even numbers. And then you kind of just rip, rip off of your tree trunks and then that's, that's what we're gonna work on, okay? So I like to come in and it doesn't have to be straight, but I like to kind of start at the top and just kind of start ripping down, okay? And there's 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 one. I like to pull off the end since I've got the sides all ripped. I like to make sure that my bottoms looked ripped too, because a trunk doesn't have like a tree doesn't ever have any just perfectly straight lines like that. So I like to rip those too, so that it looks a little bit more like organic is what they call that, more na natural. And then we're going to just kind of keep ripping. And you can decide, oh, you know what, I want to do way thick trees, or you can do one big thick tree and then one little tiny tree, or you can do whatever you want. I'm going to just kind of like rip off some of these. And I'm just going to kind of like rip it down. Okay. And you see this one kind of starts off skinny, it gets fat in the middle. Um, whatever you want to do is just fine. Okay. And then I'm going to just kind of make my little pile of trees. I think I'm going to try to do one really skinny one. Let's see. Oh, that one got really skinny. If you just kind of go slow, see? But I kind of think that's going to be a cool looking tree. And then we're going to rip off the top part. And that how many, let's see, how many trunks is that? That's one, two, three, four. I'm going to do one more tree trunk. And then we're going to make some branches, OK? Make some branches. And the nice thing about this is while we're doing this, our tree, our paper is drying and it'll be dry by the time we're ready to start attaching our branches. So now we need branches, right? We need to put our tree, our tree needs a bunch of branches. And so these guys can be short. So I'm gonna use the short side of my paper. And these guys, I'm going to just kind of like do like a whole bunch of like little just weird shapes and it's okay if they break off like that. That is totally okay. Um, because these guys you want them to just kind of look different. It's totally okay so that one's like a good little shape. Um, I'm going to actually rip off this straight edge so that we're working with the right kind of a thing and so then you're just going to kind of keep just ripping off it feels just kind of like you're like making a giant mess but that's okay it's okay we're going to just kind of keep going Christian, what would you recommend for people who do not have brown paper today if you don't have brown paper you could do you know what i might do if you have like white paper you could do white paper and then like do the exact same thing i'm doing rip the white paper and then maybe go back with like a a brown or a black marker and kind of do some lines on it and make it look like um, uh, aspen bark or um, there's a bunch of different kinds you could do black paper would totally work or maybe you live in like fairyland and your trees are purple like it's like entirely up to you you can do any 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 color of paper you want you could also do like white paper that you paint brown and then rip the brown paper and then rip it once it's brown. That would take a little bit longer than like what we'll do today, 
but there's no like, there's no wrong or right way to do it. You can do it however you want. That's a very good question. Okay, do a couple more of these. We need some like super skinny guys because we want the branches to be skinnier than the trees. We had a good idea from Rain. Let's okay. Green paper and make plants and bushes too. Oh, that's a really good idea. Yeah. Or you could even do colored paper and do like cool flowers. That could be a cool, I like cool interpretation of that. Good call. You guys are so creative. This is why I like working like and doing art with kids because you guys come up with such great ways to like make it work. Does anybody um, put in want to put in the Q and A like have anybody going anywhere fun like on a vacation this summer? Got any fun trips coming up? I'm going next week. I'm going to be off of work. This is like the last thing I do before I sign off for my vacation, and I'm going to a girls' camp, a camp for like um, with my church, and I'm doing crafts with 150 girls the whole time and it's going to be like my dream scenario i'm very excited about it anybody else going somewhere cool Ooh, and then later on this summer right back before school starts i'm going to go to a national park in southern utah called arches where they have like these red rocks and these big like towers it's super cool i'm super excited about that okay so while you guys are putting in the chat, the, the, the Q and A answers to that vacation question, we're gonna move on to gluing stuff down because I wanna make sure we get through all of this. Now, let me show you a super awesome secret to know when your paint is ready for the next step. So do you remember when we first started painting and we had all of that paint down and it was looked wet, like it totally looked shiny and wet. That is how you know that your paint is still wet and not ready to be used. Suddenly though, you see how it looks dry. It just looks like it's not shiny anymore. It just looks like normal paper. That's your clue that your paint is ready for your next step. When your paint starts to look dry and flat, that's how you know that your paint is dry. So now you see, I can touch it and I'm not getting any paint on my hand. So that's gonna be our indicator. And also for this step, it's totally okay if you get a little bit of paint. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, but that's how I know, like, no, now, now it still feels damp and it could probably still use a little bit longer time, but to start gluing on it, it's good to go, we're ready. So I'm gonna put it back down here front and center and let's start gluing our things down. And for this step, you have two choices. You can either use like a glue stick. We have a Creatology glue stick that you can use, or you can use the glue that came in your craft kit, which is this amazing glitter and sequin glue, which, it says it's for glitter and sequins, but you can use it for anything. Um, it's also by Creatology. This has like become my new favorite glue. Like this is one of the best secrets for the kid on the kids side that everybody should be using. Um, so we're gonna use a little bit of both of these. So to start with my trunks, since they're so big, I'm gonna start by gluing down my trunks. So I'm gonna start and I'm not gonna think about this too much, okay? I'm gonna just kind of put some glue down the side of my trunk like this. You guys all probably know how to use a glue stick. You've probably done it a whole bunch in your life. We're gonna just start sticking our um, tree, our tree down. Now you don't want it to start right at your horizon line. You kind of want it to have some depth, right? So you're actually gonna kind of start like that it's gonna kind of come down a little bit and then we're gonna kind of have some things that come up and down. Um, and I think actually it's probably gonna be easier if I use like Elmer's glue or my liquid glue cause that's just gonna make it go a little bit faster. Okay, so now I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna do a little bit of glue there. We're gonna do a little bit of glue here and then a little bit of glue here. And let's see, we're gonna have this come down here and we're gonna kind of put these guys close together. And we're gonna to put that down like that. 
we're making a forest, remember? So your forest is going to be, and I might make this like a short guy. We're going to put a little bit of glue along here like that. We're going to put this up here like that. Okay, see, I'm not thinking about it too much and I got a little glue over there, but it's okay because guess what? This glue dries clear, which is one of my favorite things about it. And we're going to put a little bit more glue on here. We'll get a little bit there. You don't need glue along the whole thing, just kind of at your ends and that will help. Okay. And then we're gonna put this guy here. Okay. And then remember I made this tiny little skinny tree. We're gonna put him right there. Or actually maybe we put him over here. Hmm, what do we think? I think I'm gonna put him over here on this side. Okay. We're gonna put him here like this. Okay. And I got a little blue paint on it, but guess what? It doesn't matter, it's all good. Okay, so here are my tree trunks. They kind of look like tree trunks, right? But they're missing like branches and limbs. So that's what we're going to do. That's why we tore off all of these little guys. We're going to kind of start using them to glue down our limbs. And we're going to just kind of fill in some of that space. Okay. And then we're going to like make this one go up tall, touch the sky. And this is where there's no like rhyme or reason. You'll see how fast I'm doing it. I'm not thinking about it too much. Put that one right there. And it's okay if you have a little extra glue on it because remember this stuff dries clear um, and it doesn't, it just doesn't matter. We're gonna put that one there like that. And then we're gonna put this little guy over here, up here sticking off. We're gonna have them all coming from all different angles and we're gonna just fill in our, our tree. Like that. We need a short skinny one. We'll keep filling it in. Do we have any exciting places that people are going that they've put in the chat for us? Yeah, we have a lot of people going to the beach. <gasps> nice. A lot of people going camping. Oh, nice. Uh, several people said they're going to Disney. <gasps> Did you guys we'll know that I've there. never been there? Oh, isn't that the saddest thing you've ever heard? An adult who'd never went to Disneyland as a kid. That's so fun. Disneyland, that should be on my list. Maybe I'll go there later on this summer. I, I have been to Harry Potter land though, in California. That was amazing. I'm a big Harry Potter fan. Okay. What do we think? We need another one coming. Where, where are there any spots we're missing? Maybe we'll have another one coming off over here. Just kidding, needed a little bit more glue for that. Okay. And maybe this way, one more. It's just whenever you get the feeling that it says it's done. Okay, so you guys, what do you think? There's our forest, our trees. We have tree trunks and we have limb, limbs sticking up off of them. They're reaching for the sky, but guess what they're missing? This time of year, don't all of our forests have lots and lots of leaves all over it? That's what we're gonna work on now, okay? So you can get a bunch of tissue paper, um, you can buy it in at Michael's. It comes like this. It was on the list for today's craft. 
um, it comes it comes pre cut, which is kind of amazing. And I have a dark green color and I have a light green color. And I went ahead and pulled a bunch out of, of our colors. Okay. And what we're going to do, this is like the easiest like piece, you guys, I can't even tell you how easy this piece is. I'm going to, I'm peeling off some of the glue off of my hands that got dry before this next step. Okay. Now we're going to use our glue. I am almost out of the glue in this, so I'm going to pull out this guy. You're going to lose a, use a liquid glue. You don't want to use a glue stick for this piece, this part, okay? And you ready for this? It's so easy. You're going to crumble it up. Because remember, we're doing mixed media, which means we want it to stick out a bit. And we're going to put glue down and just put that on. The way I like to do it is because I'm going to kind of cover this whole thing as I like to go like tree by tree and just kind of like maybe like put a, bill, a, a little bit of glue down and then we're going to fill that in. Okay. And then I'm going to, so I'm going to take some dark and put that down, another light. And then you just want to kind of like fill in all of that glue. It's super duper simple. Get another yellow, a dark green. You could even at this point, like if you decided, you know what, I want some trees with like, I want to do like cherry trees. You could pull out some like white and pink tissue paper and glue in like do mostly green with little pops of like pink or, or, or you know, other because like cherry trees or like dogwood trees that have like flowers could be cool. Oh, or you could do this for like a fall scene and do like red, yellow and green and red, yellow and orange. We're just going to fill in all of these spots. Make our tree so it like really stands out and has some like texture. We have a few questions about. Yeah, this. let's hear it. So some people don't have green paper and some people don't have tissue paper. So good questions. You can swap out tissue paper. The great thing about this is I could actually like, I could do this with, with this. Like you could do like with, with construction paper, like I could pull out, like, you know, I could use green tissue paper and do the same thing. You just might have, it's a little bit harder to wad. Um, but you could do what, if you wanted to do, you could do your leaves, whatever color you want. Um, your leaves could be um, yellow or maybe it's like, the other thing to think about the forest is like you, the light plays, the light has a, has a big part to play in how, what color you see in the forest. So maybe it's like nighttime in your forest, your trees are like black, right? And you're doing a nighttime scene. Um, you can do really like any color leaves that you want. Or again, you can paint some, some paper um, green and uh, just do it that way too. So I'm going to keep Filling this in, I'm going to keep adding some more glue. And I like to just kind of do it all because then it makes it easier to just kind of fill it in. Okay. So you don't need a ton of glue. I'm just kind of making little like hash marks, hashtags. And we're going to just start filling in the whole thing with our glue, with our paper. You could also do, um, there are some like aspen trees that have like yellow leaves, even in the summertime, or you could do like, you could do any color, like you could, you can make it like a flowering, like a crepe myrtle that has like purple flowers and not leaves. Like you could decide it's your own tree too, that it does what you want, that it's like whatever you want it to be. There's like no right or wrong reason, which is one of the reasons that I love art so much. It's like an opportunity like to just turn your brain off and just make something pretty. And it's really relaxing. That's why I love to do it. And then our, ne our next step is gonna be to make some animals that go in our forest. Keep 
filling it all in. This is the part that you just kind of like get into the zone, right? Like you just crumble, crumble. Sometimes when I was in school, the way that we did this is that we would take a piece of tissue paper and then we would take a pencil or a brush and we would like do it like this. And then we would like use this to put this down in the glue and then it made it like extra pop. I find that this, this way is easier because then you can use your finger to like crumble it down. It's a little bit easier and it goes a little bit faster. But you could you could do it that other way if you want to. There's no right or wrong. There's no right or wrong way. Just fill in all of that glue. And you can see I kind of like just pick up a little stack. And so I did some dark green, a bunch of dark green, and then I moved on to some light green. And I'm just kind of like spreading it all out so it all kind of looks even. Okay. I've also done projects where I did fireworks with these like I painted the background black um, or dark blue and then like a black city. And then I got these in like red and white and purple and pink and did a whole bunch of these in the sky and it made it look like fireworks. That might be a cool project to do for the 4th of July next, next week. Okay, we've got this little area left to do. Let's see, fill in this. And it's okay if some of our trees are more full than others, because not all trees are like the same, right? It's totally okay. Okay, I think we're getting close. What do you guys think? Sometimes it's helpful to like, hold it up and see what you're looking at. You guys see that? The nice thing too is like, it is okay if you have white paint or white white glue showing at this point, because all of that white glue is gonna dry clear. If you can see here, let me hold it like this so you can see. All of that white glue is gonna dry clear. As long as you're happy with how the leaves work and look, then we're good. It does not have to be perfect. So I'm gonna add another dark green here. And one right here just to fill it in a bit. Okay, I'm gonna call that good. I think that's gonna be done. I think that is a pretty awesome full forest. I think that looks fantastic. And we could stop right there. Like that could be it. We could be done. You've made an amazing forest, go hang it on the fridge. But I don't know about you guys, but most of the forests that I go visit have little animals that live in the forest, right? What kind of animals live in the forest? Little bunny rabbits, lots and lots of different kinds of birds. Sometimes there's deer, um, bears. Anybody ever seen a bear? That's That would be scary. I've never seen a bear in real life, but I would be very nervous about that. Um, so our next step is we're gonna make some little like creatures that live in our forest using our pom-poms. So let me pull out our, let me put this away here. Let me pull out our box. And we're gonna pull out, let's see, to make our creatures, for sure we're gonna need some googly eyes. So we'll pull out some of those. We might use some of these foam stickers to like make a beak or like bunny ears. So we're gonna pull out those guys. And then we definitely need some pom-poms, okay? Do I want any sparkly pom-poms? 
you know what, maybe I do. We're going to pull out those two. And then the other thing we're going to need are some, um, some, uh, some of these. So let me pull out some of our, oh, these guys are the ones that are like super furry. So those might be kind of cool. And some, some, some of these. So let me, let's put all of this back up in here, kind of clean up my mess as I go along. Okay. Okay. I'll put this guy up in the background. And now we're going to make some animals. So I think that the first animal that my forest is going to have is going to be a little bunny rabbit. Okay. So I'm going to pull out some of my pom poms and I'm going to do a big pom pom on the bottom for my head and then a little one for my top, my, 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 my or excuse me, the big one on the bottom for my body. And then a top one is going to be my head. And let's see, do I want to do a pink? Uh, we'll do a purple on the bottom. And do I want to do another purple on the top? Or do I want to do maybe green? You know what? My bunny rabbit is going to be, you know what? We're going to do red because I think that will be cute. So we're going to do a purple and red bunny rabbit. We're going to do whatever color. These are magical and imaginary rabbits, OK? Now we're going to use this, this glue. Okay, if you have the craft kit, this glue is the same as what's in here. I just don't have much left in here because I have um, used that for a bunch of other projects. So when you're using pom poms, you kind of want to find a flat spot. You see how like there's these little spots that are kind of like inherently flat. I like to find a spot and I'm going to just put in a, like a big daub of glue. Okay, and then I'm going to find my little head and I'm going to stick it together. Now this glue is amazing. It takes a minute to, you kind of just have to hold it for a couple of seconds. Um, and then once you do that, you just kind of like, once you do that, it's gonna be amazing, but you do kind of have to give it a chance to dry, okay? So we're gonna hold it together there. Any questions as we get up to this point when we're making our little creatures on our forest scene? Um, we have a few people okay. who do not have pom-poms today. That's okay. You you can add your pom poms later. You don't have to do your pom poms right now. That's totally okay. Maybe you can draw them in, or if you just have foam, like you could draw, like you could actually too would be cute if you got another piece of white paper, drew out your shape, and then cut it out, and then just kind of glued it on top. That would be really cute, actually. Um, it's totally okay if you don't have pom poms. Not if not the end of the world. Or if you have like little foam stickers, like you could easily like take out like your shapes here and cut out your shapes and do something like that too. That could work too. Okay, so now you can see my piece. My piece is all together. That's that's kind of holding together pretty good. Um, it's not dry all the way, so don't start banging on it. But it's mostly ready to go. And now. I'm going to do some um, bunny ears because ears are really important for the bunny, right? They have those big ears that stand up. And so that's what we're going to do. Um, and I think my bunny is going to have, um, we're going to give our bunny purple ears to match the body, okay? So the what we're going to do here, this part is like super easy, okay? I'm going to pull out my special scissors, my kid's scissors. The nice part is, is like even with your creatology scissors or kids scissors, you can do this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a big piece, like like a couple of inches piece of my pipe cleaner or my stem, my Chanel stem. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. The I'm going to cut two of them. And these are going to be my bunny ears, okay? And I'm going to kind of fold them like that. See how that kind of looks like a bunny ear? I'm going to fold it like that, okay? And that's going to stick together. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. OK. And then I'm going to kind of twist it so it sticks together like that. OK. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take some glue and we're going to put two big globs of glue on top of my bunny ears, on my top of my bunny head. And then 
we're going to put our pipe cleaner right into that. Okay. And we're going to do one first to start with. And then I'm going to grab the other one. And I'm going to hold both of them. And we're going to hold both of them like that. Okay. And now we're making our bunny ears. Okay. Actually, you know what I think might be best? We're going to actually swap, swap that up. We're going to put them on the back. We're going to do that on the back. I think that would be better than trying to stick it off the top. So we're going to put one here and one here, and we're going to hold them like that for just a minute. Okay. And that's going to give us our little bunny ears. Remember, you kind of have to hold it when you're working with like soft stuff and just give it a chance to kind of settle in and really hold down. Okay. Okay, there's our bunny with bunny ears. And we're gonna give that a chance to just kind of dry a little bit. Oh, it came up, let's see here. This is a part where you might just need to give it a lot more glue than you think you will, okay? And remember, it's okay because this glue dries clear. We'll put that down, we're gonna put that down and we're gonna just hold that for just a second. Okay, just give them a chance to really get in there. Don't mind me, I'm just holding glue, glued ears. Okay. Okay, so that's what it looks like on the back, but don't worry, you can't see it from the front. So we're gonna let that dry for a bit. And now we're gonna work on some hands and some feet, okay? I don't think I want blue, I don't think I want purple hands and feet. I'm gonna go with some red. And I think what I'm gonna do is just pop out a red pipe cleaner. Let's see, how are we at on time? We've got 10 minutes left. So we're gonna finish this, no problem. Pull out my red. Okay, and we're gonna do the same thing except we're gonna cut little smaller little bits. We're gonna, there's one. We're gonna do another one and we're gonna do four of these, okay? Okay. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold these in half like that. Same thing, we're gonna fold them in half and then just twist the edge so that it sticks together. Fold it in half, twist the edge. Fold it in half, twist the edge. And these are going to be our little feetsies and our little arms. Okay. Okay. So while it's laying flat, oh, my ears came off. See, sometimes it just needs, you just got to hold it for a lot longer than you think you do. But because we don't have time, I'm going to just, you just know you're going to just hold it for a long time until it's all the way dry. But you see it works because the body and the head are stick together. You just kind of have to hold it. I'm trying to hurry, I'm trying to rush it, but that's okay. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this down and we'll, we'll glue them down here in just a second. So now we're gonna glue our feet and our bottom, our feet to the bottom of our little rabbit, okay? We're gonna grab two of these and we're gonna stick them in like this and we're gonna hold them for a minute, okay? So those are gonna stick to the bottom of our rabbit body. We'll worry about our ears in a minute, but they're gonna look like that on the body. Okay. Hold them in. Okay. And while we're holding those, we're gonna do a little bit on the side like that. And we're gonna do one little hand right here. Like that, we'll hold that like that. And then we'll put another dot here. We're gonna put our little armsies. So now we have a little rabbit that has feet and hands. 
And then here, I'm just I'm going to put some more glue. Okay. Do this just one second. Give those a chance. And then what I think I'm going to do to make it easier because these rat these ears are so big, I think that's part of the problem. Is we're going to put our rabbit down here on the ground. Okay. So I'm going to do a, a spot right here, and this is where our ears are going to go. And we're going to just course correct. And we're going to put our rabbit ears right here. Okay. There's those. And then those. And we're going to put those down just like that. You see? Sticking to my hands a little bit. And we're going to put this guy on top of it. We're going to put glue down first. Okay. And here is our little rabbit guy. Okay. And then we're going to do some eyes. We're going to just do, we're going to cut out some sticker eyes because I think that will be easier. And we're going to give him little purple, little blue eyes. We're going to just kind of do a little circle. Okay. And we're going to peel that and stick that down. And then we're going to peel, uh, do another one. Okay. And stick that down. Okay. And here, oh, here's our cute little rabbit. See, oh, that's coming out. There you go. So there is our piece all ready to go. Can you see it? There's our cute rabbit and our beautiful trees and our beautiful sky. You could even like, if you wanted to like use some of these stickers, maybe I'll use this orange one up here and I'm gonna make a little like, um, oh, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna add a sun. And I'm going to use one of these sparkly stickers or sparkly pom poms. We're going to have a big, bright orange sun right up here. It's going to be our sun. Hold on to it for a minute. Give it a chance. I'm going to fix this guy really quick. There we go. We have a question, Chris. Sure, let's hear it. How many camp creatology classes are there going to be? There are, that's a great question. There are going to be a class every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday between now and the end of July. So we have another, let's see, nine classes, nine? Yeah, nine classes. Um, and if you ever want to go, if you can't go to one and you want to just see what you have, um, see what we did, you can go to the website, you can go to michaels.com and you can um, go to the on demand section and they're all pre recorded so you could like do it like we did today, but you could watch it back later and that would be super, super awesome. But there are a lot of things that you can do with it so. You can see, given a little bit of time, you can see that the glue holds up better. Or sometimes if you find that this isn't working, you might want to try like getting it your grown up to help you and they can help glue gun it down. But it does work. It just takes a little bit. You just kind of have to hold it and finish it. But I just think this is like the cutest. Look how good that turned out. Cute little rabbit with blue eyes. I love it. We added a sun last minute that wasn't in the plan, but I thought, you know what, we need a sun in our forest because it's a shiny, sunny day. Um, but that is 
how it works. You could also like, let's see, do we have, you could do, you could cut out like circles with your, um, you could cut out flowers and do some flowers and put some flowers down here. There's all sorts of things that you can do to make it your own and to embellish it and to like turn it into your own piece of artwork that you're proud of. Um, but that is all the time we have left. We have four minutes left. Are there any questions? I will stick around to see if we have any more questions. Maybe you can pin me back up and we, we, we just see if you guys have any questions. What do you guys think? If not, it was lovely spending the afternoon with you. I um, loved being able to like step away from all of my meetings and do some crafts with you guys today. It looks like we, oh, they want to know what, do you know what the next project is gonna be on Monday? You know what, I can show you, hold on just one second. I have it right here. Um, if you go to your Michael's store, you can go get one of these. It's a brochure and it walks you through everything that is gonna be done on our projects. And our project on Monday is going to be, hold on. See, yesterday we did these really cool foam masks, these bird masks, they looked awesome. And, um, oh, on Monday, we're gonna do some paper weaving and we're gonna make this turtle. You kind of, it's kind of hard to see. Maybe you can see it better here. Um, but we're gonna do this woven, rainbow woven turtle. So you got a little turtle head and the turtle body, but it's all, of, next week is all about ocean animals. And then you're gonna do um, an octopus on a stick that you can like turn into like a puppet. And this one is my favorite. I'm really excited. This brochure has paper you can color like images. But this one, you're going to use some clay and you're going to make some sea creatures out of clay. It's pretty cool. Um, and then the, and then and then and then we have space. I'm going to teach you I teach you guys how to make solar system necklaces if you want or a rocket ship card. All sorts of super duper exciting things are coming down the pipeline. Any other questions about camp creatology that I can help with? I think that's it for now. Okay. I'm very excited. All right. Awesome. Well, it was lovely having you guys. I had a great time and you guys have a good summer. If you, if you do your projects, be sure to do it with, do hashtag made it with, make it with Michaels um, and hashtag camp creatology. And that way we can see um, what you made. I'd love to see it. That'd be awesome. Okay. Bye guys. Have a great summer.